Hey everyone, welcome back to Break Tag Stacking. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about uh, an article that I saw that uh, is kind of going against a lot of things that I've been saying recently, or at least some of the things that I've been uh, doing with my uh, my silver stacking strategy. It's not that I've been, you know, uh, preaching anything or anything like that. It's just, uh, for me, I've been kind of waiting for the uh, silver price to go down, or at least the premiums to go down on a lot of the silver pieces that I've wanted to pick up. Uh, I've been putting off picking up the uh, the 2021 Maple Leafs. Uh, I have wanted to pick. Uh, I do want to pick up and finish uh, two of the 2021 Maple Leaf tubes. But uh, I mean, it's already the end of April, and I haven't picked up a single one yet. Same with the American Silver Eagles. I wanted to pick up a tube of the old design and the new design. Uh, I still have yet to pick up, uh, or I still have yet to start those tubes, or at least the uh, the old design. That tube still isn't off the ground. And uh, I keep saying that, you know, waiting for those lower premiums and this and that. Uh, well, I stumbled across this article, and it was talking about why uh, waiting for cheaper silver um, might not be the best play right now, or it might not make much sense. Or if they're saying, you know, don't hold your breath because it's going to be a long time until you see some of the uh, some of the premiums, uh, you know, sort of go down or relax. Uh, and uh, I thought it was pretty interesting because it is going against what I've been doing, which is kind of trying to wait it out. And uh, this article is saying that that might not be the best strategy. So I thought it would be a pretty interesting article to go over because judging by what I've been seeing in my comments and uh, emails back and forth with uh, subscribers and viewers that uh, you guys have been doing the same where you've been uh, holding off on the, uh, the things that have been affected by the higher premiums. Um, like I was picking up these Kennedy half dollars for the longest time until they were uh, completely sold out at uh, Silver Gold Bowl. And now they do have the option of picking up some junk silver there, but they've completely changed their prices. So now it's not, you know, the best deal uh, on their site anymore. Now it's just, you know, comparable to what you're going to be picking up or what the premiums you're going to be paying on some of the other stuff. Uh, they, uh, they hadn't adjusted their prices and I think people were uh, getting as much as they could grab. And uh, I did pick up quite a few of the Kennedys, but uh, they've changed and, you know, the price has gone up on those. So uh, it, uh, it has been tough for me uh, picking up silver. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I haven't got in much new silver. I have been picking up some fractional gold to kind of uh, compensate for that. And I have been putting away some money and stacking some cash away. Uh, you know, that would have normally been used for picking up silver, but since I've been waiting, you know, just stacking that cash off to the side. Uh, for, for when that day happens, when, you know, uh, everything changes and those premiums break and all that, that's what I've been waiting for and that's what I've been hoping for. Uh, but looking at this article um, is kind of suggesting that that might not be the best course of action. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump onto the computer and uh, show you this article. Okay, so this is the article here. It is on uh, money metals, and the name of the article is Three Reasons Why Waiting for Cheaper Silver uh, Doesn't Make Sense, and it's cents spelled like the uh, dollars and cents. Um, if you're still waiting to buy physical silver to start a stash, you're now playing financial Russian roulette with four rounds in the cylinder. Uh, the chat rooms talked about buying silver and gold when the decline in price. If silver goes down to 20, uh, $22, I'm all in. Uh, when these excessive premiums drop a few dollars, I'm backing up the truck. Uh, unfortunately, that kind of sounds what I've been, that's kind of sounds like what I've been saying uh, or what I've been doing or not suggesting. Uh, you know, not the I haven't been saying I'm waiting for the price to drop down to 22 because I do know that the price drop doesn't necessarily mean that those premiums are going to drop. For me, it's the premiums that I've been waiting out, uh, but they, uh, they, they're going to touch on all that as I go further here. So yeah, the first of the three reasons why here it says uh, emotion and sentiment. Believe it or not, buying uh, on a price drop goes against human nature. It is a bit strange because if you go to the store and find your favorite grass-fed beef on sale, you'll probably see how much you can stuff in your freezer. But back to the metals. How many people do you know who purchased silver in the spring of 2020 when it fell below $12, or in 2008 when it fell to $9, before rising to 50 less than three years later? Did you? Well, I didn't. I wasn't doing it back then. Uh, I did pick up some silver uh, in 2020. That's when I started stacking, but I was not stacking back in, uh, back in uh, 2008. 
Another big change, seemingly contradictory, is that in the uh, increasing number of well-studied investors are buying whether the price goes up or down uh, with retail supply getting continually whittled down. So kind of, you know, cost averaging, I suppose, is what they're saying. Their sentiment seems not as heavily impacted as others who remain fearful of declines or, as is still the case with some Americans, are not yet aware of how quickly government-induced inflation is eating away at the value of their pensions and the greenbacks in their wallets. One of the most important characteristics of an investor who succeeds long-term over the majority who do not is the ability to buy when others are selling and sell when others are buying. Uh, it's like the habit of going to the gym. At some point, it never gets any easier, no matter how strong your original motivation was. It still can be hard to push yourself out the door and keep at it. To handle buying more silver when sentiment is negative, like it is now, simply go out, as Galactic Update's Stuart Thompson says, and buy less than is rational. How much is less important than keeping the habit? Uh, this is where a periodic auto buy system works so well. The decision was previously made and since it's automatic, less second guessing gets in the way. Now, I mean, that does work, but for me, uh, for my dollar cost average, I haven't been doing it for the longest time. So if I were to just continue putting in as much as I was putting in before, then that would completely obliterate the cost dollar average and, you know, go through the roof. So uh, uh, for, it's kind of hard for me to get into that mindset of just buy no matter what the price because, uh, you know, the majority of what I'm paying and why it's so high is these premiums. And uh, I will leave a link in the description if you want to go through the whole thing. I'm not going to read the entire article, but I'm going to go down here to the second one where they're going to be talking about premiums. And it says, uh, a decade ago, the premiums didn't change much. Now there's a different metric. When the price drops, people buy more. Supplies dry up because silver miners are producing less and just as important legitimate sellers who are not trying to gouge anybody raise premiums because they're paying way more for supply. If they sell what they have for a silly paper price, unreflected of a market re uh, reality, then they have no product. To make matters worse for the contrarian who's waiting for a price drop, premiums rise to the point that their cost goes up even more uh, than they drop in the physical price. For for example, the going rate for American Silver Eagle used to be about 3 bucks over a bullion coin of the same weight. So the premium on top was $3. Uh, these days, an American Eagle can set you back $10 over spot. So if you're waiting for $22 silver, and it should actually be getting there, you'll be paying about $32 on top of that, the premium. If you see silver getting down to $22, you are still going to be paying $32 for that coin. Uh, that's if you can find any. And going down here, it says blame Canada, you know, punching bag up here up in Toronto. Uh, we'll take it. Let's see what they're blaming us for. If you're one of our unfortunate neighbors to the north, uh, yeah, that's me, and you didn't buy any silver some years ago when the Cando was trading at par to the US dollar, uh, you now get to pay an extra 20% because of a much less favorable exchange rate. Yeah, well, that does kind of suck. <laughs> A double cost premium by a different name. Pardon our Canadian friends for having a hard time backing up the truck just now. So, you know, um, I haven't been backing up the truck, obviously, but uh, I have been picking up things here and there and showing them on the, uh, the channel and things like that. Uh, but it has been tough. I haven't been, like I said before, I haven't been able to pick up as much as I wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's shown, you know, I haven't been able to show off a lot of stuff or at least unboxings lately. So it says under 30% silver from primary silver mines. So explaining that down here, it says 70% silver, 7 of silver produced as byproduct of gold, lead, zinc, and copper, as it shows there. And this little cut of the pie chart there is the primary uh, silver mining. The, the rest of the silver that's mined is as a byproduct of this mining. Even if silver prices rise, miners don't necessarily produce more. Uh, silver supply is inelastic and uh, low supply plus growing demand equals even higher prices. So all of that makes sense. And uh, I'm not disputing any of that. It's just, you know, um, it's tough to buy in these situations. And so supply versus demand. In the old days, when the price dropped, you could simply go in and get what you wanted because people stopped buying and there was plenty around, in part due to the global silver production running a surplus each year. Yields at the relatively few primary silver miners have been dropping over a decade, but the decline in total ounces produced just started showing up in the annual figures during the last few years. 
2020 is likely to mark the fourth consecutive year in this pattern. Thus, a profoundly altered and systematic supply metric is now in play. So this is where we're starting to get into that long term uh, where this might just be the price of silver now is this supply versus demand. So it has been a long term thing. They're saying over the last couple of years, they've been noticing this trend. And now in 2021, it seems like, uh, uh, you know, the bill has come due or, you know what I mean? So we're starting to see the effects on the price. Uh, you know, they said that trend over the last couple of years, it's already it's caught up to us now in 2021 and we're starting to see that uh, supply and demand problem and that uh, you know the, that's increasing the price and uh, you know judging by the trend it's going to be continuing going this way so that's only going to further uh, you know make the supply versus demand issue something that's going to be affecting the price so it says as mentioned above uh, we're well into a structural ongoing supply decline, made worse because most silver used in uh, modern applications is not recoverable and thus uh, lost for reuse. The trickle of additional new silver production coming online is simply not going to change this anytime soon. Uh, slammed against the drop is a sea wave of new demand from both investors and industry. Lake Palladium, which went through the same supply demand uh, alter, alteration deficit on a smaller scale, the result before long is going to be an upside price explosion. Also, whether or not you believe in conspiracy theories, silver, unlike other commodities on the board has for the past few decades uh, been massively manipulated by short sellers who push paper silver derivatives into the market in order to keep the pr true price well below where all things considered it should be. In the process, they benefit by the resulting volatility in both directions. The distortion between price and value has been so out of kilter for so long that it's safe to say none of us really has a handle on what the price should be. Uh, before long, we're likely to find out. All in all, hanging around for more affordable silver prices doesn't seem to make much sense. It doesn't make dollars either. That's the end of the article here. I'll leave a, description, a link in the description if you're interested in reading through it again. Uh, this supply and demand chart is uh, what has got me rethinking my strategy. Uh, obviously, we all know that there's uh, the supply has vastly outweighed the demand recently, but I didn't know too much about this. Uh, where it's talking about the primary silver miners, uh, you know, their production has been dropping over the past decades, but it's only been showing up in the past few years in the annual figures. So it doesn't seem like that trend is going anywhere, or is you know going to be uh, stopping the the uh, direction it's going. So that seems like it means that the prices are likely to stay where they're going to be, uh, uh, or if not get worse, you know what I mean? Uh, with the supply and the demand, if it just gets that little bit worse, then obviously we've seen that you know those premiums might get higher just because of all of the, uh, all of the things that were stated up here, why the premiums have gone up. It doesn't seem like anything is going to be coming in the near future to change these situations so that the premiums would go or would at least stay the same. You know, unfortunately, it seems like it's going to get worse. But yeah, like I said, that's the end of the article. Like I said, it was three reasons why waiting for cheaper silver doesn't make much sense. And uh, like always, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read it again. OK, so that was the article there. I thought it was a pretty interesting read. And, uh, you know, it does make sense, especially when they're talking about that supply and demand. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any relief in the, uh, the near future for these prices. And it uh, doesn't seem like there's anything that's going to be stopping these premiums from, uh, you know, increasing. As I said, I would, uh, as of this point, I would kind of live with them staying where they are, even though they're quite unrealistic at this point or prohibitive for picking up some silver. Um, if you could say that, you know, they're going to be staying at this, uh, this rate for, you know, an X amount of time, I can justify picking up. But uh, it just seems by from reading this article that, uh, you know, those premiums uh, aren't going anywhere. And if anything, they're just going to continue to rise. So um, it might not make sense uh, or too much sense to be sitting on the sideline for too much longer. Um, I might just start picking up, you know, obviously less than I'd be picking up before. Um, but, you know, maybe stop picking up some of the fractional that I've been picking up, the fractional gold, and just putting it, start putting it into some of the, the major.
maples and the eagles that I want to pick up and even some generic silver uh, but I've noticed that the generic rounds and the generic bars the uh, the premiums there's no break on those either you know it's uh, you know they're very very close to some of the uh, the sovereign nation coins in some cases with the Krugerrands and the Britannias some of the rounds are the exact same prices as these uh, coins so um, uh, there's not too much of a choice when it comes to uh, you know a great deal but uh, you know that's kind of the times we're in right now so uh, if you're still looking to be picking up silver or if you're just starting your stack unfortunately it's uh, you know might have to bite the bullet and deal with these premiums because it doesn't seem like they're, uh, they're going to be going anywhere for a while. And uh, I do hope that changes, obviously, because I'm still in accumulation mode. And uh, like I said, I don't want to obliterate my dollar cost average, so I'm not going to be, you know, breaking the bank or increasing my budget by any means, picking up silver in the near future. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, pushing forward, and uh, you might start seeing some Maple Leafs and Eagles on this channel in the near future. But anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I uh, hope you come back for the next one. Thank you.